hungry and alone, this little Gak is lost. A fugitive on the run from authority, left with nothing but his exosuit and a damaged multi-tool. His only chance of survival is to escape the galaxy. If he is to survive, he was scavenging among the harsh environments, using only what he can find to aid his journey. His broken multi-tool is the first of his problems, but this is no challenge for the resourceful creature. Mining ferret dust and carbon from his surroundings, he scurries up. Soon, he'll need to find shelter from the harsh elements, enabling him to craft the resources from need for the perilous journey ahead. For what could be a lengthy search for a crashed ship. Having collected enough resources and finding cover, the little Gek crafts the essentials he needs and gets ready to leave the shelter of the cave. Heading north, a buzzing noise in the distance intrigues the little Gek. Clever cautious, he approaches with his multi tool in hand, ready for any eventuality. A large glowing red structure is the cause of all this commotion. The command post of the Sentinel AI to patrol the galaxy. The Gek knows what must be done and heads towards the control to the same. Ever hopeful for useful technology to aid his journey, he checks the most of Crash. But alas, the tool is no better than the one you already has. Salvaging any useful components from the deactivated sentinels, he continues his journey. A nice surprise lies ahead for this weary Gak, a drop pod with what looks like functional exosuit upgrade and some much needed respite from the midday sun. Packing up his refiner, a low rumbling engine noise as I'm excited. Scurrying over the hill, he's greeted by a Viking pirate trader. The trader seems only too happy to help out a fellow fugitive, offering to trade items. What little the Gek has to trade, he manages to acquire an upgrade to his suits as a protection, helping him buy some time on this relentless planet. His scanner shows a strange fingery deposit of ad. The little Gek recognizes these as valuable resource nodes. Tuning his multi-tool to the optimum mining frequency, it sets about, gathering the uranium and gold contained within. Although large, the creatures on this planet seemed fairly docile, well adapted for this harsh environment, eating a diet of fireberry and hepatoid wheat. However, the little Gek remains cautious knowing that any confrontation could be fake. Reaching a cliff top, a settlement sprawled out ahead. For a moment, the little Gek paused, taking in the sight of civilization, before reminding himself that for him, in this galaxy, there was no salvation. With Buzzard circling and his resources running low, the Gek knew he needed to find a crashed ship soon. Now, out of life support gel, fireberries could only sustain as a replacement for so long. The road had been tough, but no risk is without its reward. The Gag scanner picks up what could be a crush site. His last hope of survival and escape from this planet's grasp. The hauler they dashed, but from no other life form in sight. He wasted no time with sitting about making repairs. Working tirelessly with a new lucid energy, almost certainly from his desire to survive, the little Gurk finished what he could. Nervously clambering into the cockpit, having managed to salvage enough launch fuel from broken machinery, he took to the skies. Despite his best efforts, the ship was severely damaged, unlikely to make it out of the atmosphere. 
he would therefore each continue his search, at least this time, from the air. As the night crept in, the Gax spotted a large crash freighter with what looked like a working blorge pad. This would suffice as a safe stopover until daybreak, when he could continue his search with the hope to leave this planet. The rest of this series will follow this little Gak on his journey throughout the unforgiving star systems and beyond the Euclid galaxy. Please ensure you are subscribed and leave a like so you too can support this little Gak on his perilous journey. <laughs>